Still not sure where to start with coding? Are you worried you're already doing it wrong? Will AI replace us all? You're not alone. I've read hundreds of your messages on YouTube, Instagram, Discord, even my email inbox, and I pulled the 18 most honest, most asked questions beginners keep running into. Some of these answers might completely change how you think about learning to code, and a few you won't hear anywhere else. If you're stuck, overwhelmed, or just getting started, this might be the video that finally makes things click. By the way, I'm Pete and I've been a professional programmer since 2012 and for the past five years I've been leading dev teams in big tech companies. Now my mission with this channel is to transfer my knowledge to you and help you learn to code properly and eventually land a job. Now before we dive in, here's a quick reminder. I've got a giveaway running right now on both my channels on YouTube and Instagram, and I'm giving away some really cool three-month subscriptions to learn to code with premium content and one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions with me to ask anything on the spot. Make sure to check the links in the description below. So question number one, where do I even start learning how to code? Start with the fundamentals of programming. That usually means learning how to write basic logic using a beginner-friendly language like JavaScript or Python. You will want to understand things like variables, loops, functions, and conditionals, which are the building blocks of all code. Don't overthink it, you don't need a perfect roadmap or a fancy setup. Just pick a structured course and get started. If you want something beginner-friendly and interactive, Screenby is an amazing and unique option. You can code directly inside their video lessons, which make learning feel way more active. I will give you a solid time frame later on, but for now, Here's your action plan. Pick one beginner-friendly course, stick with it and don't jump around after two lessons and build two to three small projects while you learn, like a calculator, a quiz application or a mini tool you would actually use. Right, question number two. How long does it take to learn coding well enough to get a job? If you're studying one to two hours a day, most people can become job ready in six to 12 months. Some go faster, other takes longer. The key here is consistent practice, building real projects and pushing through the tough parts. You don't need to know everything, just enough to show you can solve problems and build functional apps. Will AI replace developers? Are there even going to be dev jobs in five years? This is the question of the decade, right? So here's the honest take. AI will change the way developers work, but it won't replace developers who adapt. Yes, AI tools like ChatGPT and Copilot are speeding up coding, bug fixing, and boilerplate writing. But they don't replace real-world problem solving, understanding product needs, thinking critically about user experience, building and maintaining full systems, making judgment calls that go beyond code. Do you need more proof? AI is like a powerful assistant, but someone still has to guide it, tweak it, debug it, and make sure the final result fits the goal. That's where you come in. And honestly, the devs who learn with AI how to use it smartly will be more valuable, not less. So yes, there will still be dev jobs in five years, but the best devs will be part human, part co-pilot. What's the difference between front-end, back-end, and full stack? Let's break it down using something we all understand, like a restaurant. Front-end is what the customer sees and interacts with. The menu, the decor, the table, setup, in web development, this means HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, along with tools like React, Vue, or Tailwind. The frontend handles what the user sees, clicks, types, and interacts with. Backend is what's happening in the kitchen. You don't see it, but it's where your food is prepared. In dev terms, this is where we handle logic, connect to databases, process data, and serve it to the frontend to be displayed. Now, full stack means you're doing both. You're building the menu and cooking the food. Should I become a front-end, back-end, or full-stack developer? My recommendation, start with front-end. It's more visual, more beginner-friendly, and gives you faster results. Once you're comfortable, you will naturally get curious about how the back-end works, how data gets stored, retrieved, and displayed. That's your entry point to back-end. Eventually, you might move into full-stack, which opens up more job flexibility. But don't rush it, learn one side well before adding the other. Which programming language should I learn first? It depends on what you want to build. If you're not sure yet, and you are starting in web development, start with JavaScript. It runs in every browser, works for both front-end and back-end, and it's widely used and supported. Avoid learning multiple languages at once. Choose one, go deep, 
and stick with it long enough to build real projects. By the way, next week's video is dedicated to walking you through every possible learning path, learning methods, and therefore what language to learn depending on what you want to be building. So you don't want to miss on that one. Subscribe. Do I need a computer science degree to become a developer? Short answer, no. Skills beats degrees in today's tech world, especially in web development. If you can build, show your work and talk about what you've done, you can get hired. Focus on projects, portfolios and problem solving. Degrees can help in some industries, but they're not a requirement for most dev jobs. Can I become a developer without math skills? Yes. You don't need advanced math to build websites or applications. What you really need is logical thinking and a bit of problem solving, which you develop naturally as you code. Unless you're getting into data science or game development, basic math is more than enough. How do I stay consistent and not give up when learning gets hard? That's a great question because consistency is what separates people who make it from those who give up. Here's the truth. Coding will get hard. You will hit bugs you can't figure out, tutorials that confuse you, and days where it feels like you're making no progress. That's totally normal. The key is to build a routine that keeps you moving forward even when motivation dips. Here's what helps. Set small achievable goals like build an nav bar or finish this Scrimba module today. Track your progress by just taking notes on what you've learned every day. This will really help in keeping your momentum going. Work in short, focused sessions. Even 30 minutes a day is powerful if you do it consistently, believe me. You can also join our community on Discord, Instagram, or anywhere else where you can ask questions and stay accountable. But most importantly, build projects. Nothing is more motivating than seeing something you made actually work. Just watching tutorials is passive. Building things gives you energy and confidence. Remember that coding is a long game. Stay consistent and progress will come, one commit at a time. How do I build a portfolio if I have no experience? You don't need a job to have a great portfolio. You need projects. Build a few apps that solve simple problems. Include clear descriptions, a working demo, a link to your GitHub, a short write-up of what you used and and yes, your personal portfolio website should be a project in itself. Make it clean and valuable to the person looking at it. What should I put on my resume if I've never had a dev job? Lead with projects. Show what you've built, not just what you've studied. A short summary at the top, technical skills, relevant education or courses like the cool certifications that Scrimba has to offer, projects with links and descriptions, any freelance or volunteer work, and if you can show that you know how to solve problems and build things, your resume is doing its job, believe me. How do I get my first freelance client or job? Build projects you can show. Offer to help local businesses or non-profits. Reach out on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Discord. You only need one client to get the ball rolling. After that, word of mouth and confidence do the rest. That's exactly how I started, by the way. If you're interested to hear the full story, let me know in the comments below and I will create a separate video about it. Do I need to learn data structures and algorithms if I just want to build websites? Not at first. Start by learning how to build with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Once you've made a few real projects, then layer in the fundamentals of DSA, like arrays, objects, loops and functions. DSA becomes more important later on, especially for interviews. But don't make it your starting point. What's the best way to learn? YouTube, bootcamp, online course, or something else? YouTube is great, but easy to get lost. Bootcamps can work, but they're expensive. I believe that paid online courses strike a great balance. They're interactive, affordable, and structured in a way that makes it easy to stay consistent since it takes you by the hand and shows you step by step what to do next and how to do it properly. Whatever you choose, the most important thing is this. Watch less, build more. How do I avoid tutorial help? Don't just follow along. Instead, code while you watch. After a tutorial, try to rebuild the project without looking. Set mini goals like changing styles and adding features. Build your own stuff no matter how small. Tutorials should help you get started, not be your only source of learning. Should I learn React or stick with HTML, CSS and JavaScript for now? Stick with HTML, CSS and vanilla JavaScript for now. If you don't know them well, React will confuse more than help. Once you've built two to three small projects without React, then you're ready to start using it and you will understand it much faster, trust me.
Should I use Windows or Mac to learn how to code? It doesn't really matter. You can absolutely learn to code on Windows, Mac, or even Linux. What matters is that you're consistent and have a setup that works for you. Here's the breakdown. Windows is perfectly fine. You might need to install a few tools like Git Bash or something else, but you can do everything from front-end to full-stack development without issues. Mac is popular in dev world, especially in startups and front-end circles because of its Unix-based system, built-in terminal and smooth developer tooling. But do you want to spend your money on something so expensive? I don't know. Linux is great too, especially if you want to get comfortable with DevOps or backend infrastructure. So the best setup, drumroll, is the one you're most comfortable using. Focus less on your operating system and more on your code editor like VS Code, browser, and tools like Git. So if you're on Windows, don't worry, you're not missing anything critical. Just get coding. How can I start getting interview invitations from companies? To start getting interview invites, you need to show two things. You can build stuff and you're actively looking to grow. Here's how to get noticed. Build a solid portfolio with at least three to five real hosted projects. Each one should have a short write-up, clean code on GitHub, and ideally a live demo. Polish your LinkedIn profile. Use a clear title like front-end developer, React, JavaScript, whatever. Write a short summary about your journey and list relevant skills. You don't have to be a professional or have a corporate experience in order to write the title on your LinkedIn or your CV. Be visible. Share your projects on social media, join dev communities, and engage in conversations. This builds credibility and gets you noticed. Referrals work as well. If there's a company you like, reach out to employees there, especially developers, and ask respectfully if they would consider referring you. Share your resume or LinkedIn and explain why you're interested. This is a win-win situation as you get a higher chance to be noticed by the recruiters and they will get a bonus if they refer you and you land the job. Apply smart. Don't spray and pray. Personalize a few applications with short cover letters and align your projects with the role. If you don't know what cover letter is or how to write one, let me know in the comments below and I will help you write a really good one. Practice coding challenges, especially for junior roles that include technical tests. Code Wars and Lead Code are great for that. Most people skip the networking step, but it's often the fastest way to get an interview. A strong portfolio plus a referral equals a massive head start. Alright, that was intense. If these answers helped even a little, drop a like, hit subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss what's next. I've got many more things to say to you. Thank you for trusting me with your questions. I believe in each and every one of you, even on the days you doubt yourself. Thanks for watching, I'm Pete and I'll see you on the next one.